Hey guys, Anthony, 4B4 Adventures. Just wanted to show you a bit of some of the things we do with batteries with a bit of testing and sussing out between different batteries to see which ones last, which ones accept charge pretty well, what solar systems work, and I'll just show you the setup we've got at the moment. So this is the 120 Prado. It's obviously got the 34R cranking battery is what we recommend for cranking for all the 1KDs, any of these sort of batteries, 800cc, plenty of cranking power. If you do a lot of winching, don't use the red one because it's going to be connected directly or close to that. You want to put a yellow or a blue top there. Um, the yellow and the blue can do cranking as well and deep cycle. These batteries can't do deep cycle. They're just cranking only. There's no winch on this vehicle, therefore not a matter, not a problem. Um, on the accessory battery, which is currently running a fridge, take note of the voltage at the moment, 13.02 volts. That's via this little box here, right? Butter bin. Well, you can have a look what it is if you like. Take it or leave it, I don't care. Batteries at 98% isn't quite right. This is just the sort of things that apps tell you. But at the moment, because we've got the SBI there and it's connected, you can see the red lights on. We've got one set of solar panels, which I'll show you in a moment. They're a set of... Uh, Melandi Outdoor Adventure, the Samson brand, their own brand now. They were quoted at 160 watt, and they do around about the same as what the King's 200 watt panels do, but they're possibly more reliable. They've got better quality wire in them and probably better quality other things that we can't see. They tell us they're better, um, but obviously a lot of these things sometimes you can't see, but time will tell. We've been thrashing those for years now. They're faded and all that sort of thing. They're still working. Some King's ones we had, they sort of had some issues and I think they had to be repaired. Someone else has got those now. We've got another newer set of King's panel, 200 watts. They work really well, but let's see how long they last. Okay, so this is the 120. These are the two batteries being charged. I'll tell you what the voltages were first, right? So this morning we had the angle compressor was running and this battery's voltage was down to 11.9. So because it's been running the fridge for a couple of days, hasn't been driven much, hasn't been on charge. It's what, just one of the things we do. We take note of where things are at. The vehicles are around the workshop. Go, okay, that battery's getting low. It's going to need some charge soon. We don't want to damage it. So I said, I'm going to put the panels on, but I went, let's see these Melandi Samson panels, Melandi Outdoor Adventure in Thomastown, you'll catch them at the full drive shows usually. You might be able to buy stuff off them online, but if you're at the full drive shows, go and say g'day, go and say Oz Prado, Chris said g'day. But um, they can be a little bit difficult, I heard, to communicate with and get hold of. They don't really have a shop. They've got a bit of a mini dusty showroom at a factory, but it's really mainly focusing on being at all the full drive and camping shows, that sort of thing. Not, not about them anyway, just trying to tell you about where we got these panels. Okay, so we've got the regulators directly on the panels. Let's go over to the vehicle. So we've got a couple of wires here. Now let's have a look. This vehicle, the Hilux has got this battery, which was probably in a reasonable condition. But the battery that I'm about to show you, the yellow top Optima that's about six years old, that's in the toolbox in the back, was on a, uh, about 12.3, 12.4 volts. And the SBI was disconnected, but we've manually connected the SBI. So we had basically two batteries that were really pretty low condition. So let's go to the one in the toolbox. Just use the solar panels. I'll just quickly show you. Oh, there's the panels. They're sitting up on the roof of the Hilux. Just gonna go to the toolbox. Okay, in the toolbox here, we're out in the sun here. So sorry about any reflection or whatever. You can see the battery. I think it was a 2016, it says over there. Nothing wrong with it, 4th 916. It's about six years old. It sits in here. It's regularly got uh, the compressor connected to it, but not switched on. It's got the um, the charge wire for when I want to plug it on the charger because we have got a charger connected here. It's sitting there connected. It's just not on at the moment, which will also tell us about the same voltage as um, what the app was telling us. We've just got to take into account if the fridge is running. So this was down to 12.3, 12.4. Um, and the, the blue one, let's go to the back of the 120 now. Let's go over here. So the 120, there's the fridge. It's not running at the moment. You'll see a voltmeter telling you about the same thing, right? 13. So what's happening at the moment is we've got one set of solar panels on the roof over there. Okay. And it's charging three Optimus plus that black battery that I'm not a fan of. Eventually it'll get replaced, but it's still working at the moment. The Hilux has got a winch on it now. So the load's going to be on that battery. It's also, this one's going to be helping out as well. If the other one drains too much, it's going to disconnect from this one. It's going to drain the other one, which is not ideal for a deep, it's not a deep cycle battery. What we really want up front is a big fat yellow Optima or something like that. 
Um, so when that other one fails, probably from winching, it'll get replaced. But when it goes flat, because the alternator can't keep up with the load from the winch, from the battery at the front, then we can use the SBI to connect to this one to restart the vehicle, recharge the batteries and keep driving. Hopefully we're not stuck in a situation where we need more power. Otherwise you've got to sit there and idle it for ages to charge up your batteries. And that's what you should do, give the winch a break. But this is not about winching and batteries too much, more just showing you, I want to tell you how low that battery voltage was this morning. These panels have only been here in the sun for, uh, there they are, right? Up there on the roof. All right, they've only been up there, it's less than an hour. And these batteries have come from, look, I connected it and then I connected them together with the SBI. Now, what do I mean by that? I think we need to go back to the front of the vehicles again. Let's go here, I've got to get over or under this wire here. See the big fat 50 amp wire, that's what we use, right? Um, so to manually connect it, some people, there's a blue wire that comes off the SBI 12, right? You see it down here somewhere, wherever it is anyway, right? You can see it, right? That's standard. And people run a wire in and you've got to push the button and hold the button in and all that if you want to connect this battery to that battery. Let's say this one's gone flat or, you know, for example, I've got my Anderson plug connected to this battery, so I'm charging this battery. But if I want to charge that one as well, then I just literally, the way I do it, I connect that onto the positive and that goes click and it connects, right? And um, of course, I just leave it there when I'm not using it. Now, same thing on the Hilux. So what do I did? We put the solar panels on. We connected the two batteries so that we know that those panels are charging four batteries. And it's already gone, so it's 100% 13 volt. We know 100% isn't correct. So when you use apps like this, don't worry about it saying 100% whether the battery's okay and all that sort of thing. That's not necessarily correct, okay? It's just a general guide. All you really wanna look at is the voltage, 12.93. Obviously the fridge is cut in. We could probably get back there in a minute and check that. But we just, I just want to say 160 watt panel out in the sun is able to, it's increasing the voltage. The charge is going in. We've actually got one of those little things to measure the, you know, the amps and the, the watts and all that stuff as well. But we're not too worried about that at the moment. Just trying to explain that those panels can charge. Optimas accept charge really easily, right? We've got three Optimas we've shown you, right? Plus that other battery that was probably the most charge out of all of them because it disconnects with the SBI. Nice, reliable setups, cheap, reliable. And when I say reliable, reliable because you can make that manual connection yourself by, you'll find over here the same setups. It's already connected, the red light's on. But if I want to manually connect it, I just make this, make contact with uh, any one of the positive terminals around this side here, and then that click and connect. So you can clip it on if you want it to stay on. For me, I just leave it like that when I'm not using it, right? You might not like that. For me, I'm into simple stuff that just works, reliable vehicles. I don't need any extra garbage you don't need. The alternators charge two batteries just fine. The alternator, well, alternator, there's only one, that's right. Anyway, this supercharge, we're probably gonna kill it with a winch. You can see the winch is there now, right? Bada bing, it's a new thing, bada bing. And I just wanted to share with you a bit of battery information. This will accept charge fairly easily as well. We love the Century Dual Force, but it does seem that it is harder to accept charge because when we put that same set of solar panels or other solar panels out and we recharge that battery, it takes a lot longer for the voltage to come back, which means it's not accepting the charge as easy with the same charging system, right? To be quite honest, even with a vehicle running with the alternator, the, so the Optimas do take the charge and recharge easier than the Century Dual Force, in my opinion. Both batteries I like. Um, so what we're gonna do, like I said, it's only been going for about an hour and we've already seen those sort of voltages you've seen already. Let's just go and have a final look and see what it is. Right, 12.82. I'm, I'm sure the fridge is running. You wanna just see, let's go for a walk back here again. Under the wire, back along here. Over here we go. Hear it? Right, and that's why you see the load voltage at the lowest closest to this area, 12.6. A fridge compressor will pull it down 0.4 to 0.5 of a volt when the compressor's running, okay? So hopefully you learned something out of this video. It's all information you need for touring. You need to know about batteries. You need to know about solar. You need to know what fridges use. We're going to leave this solar panel on for as long as we can. Um, there may be another video on it or you know people get sick of seeing the same thing so i don't want to go on about it too much either so whatever right but here they are and what i'm trying to say is if this sat here all day in the uh nice blue 
sky and the sun, and you don't always have that, I believe that they will all be up in the 14 volt range in a few hours time, but I could be wrong. So you've got to convert at 160 watts. I reckon we're going to get about, reality, we're going to get about seven amps, maybe eight, maybe six out of those panels. We're using, over there we're using, the compressor running's using 2.5 amps when it's running. So when it kicks in, compressors go up to about maybe three, four, five amps, say about four ballpark. It'll settle back down to 2.5 roughly, depends what fridge and what compressor. So using 2.5 and it's probably running about one third or one quarter of the time. So we're using less than one an hour and we're putting in six an hour, but we've got quite a capacity of batteries to replace 55 amp hour here times really at least two that are gonna be down to about 35. So we need 20 AHs for this one, 20 for the blue one, uh, five or 10 for the red one. So we need about 50 AHs to make 50 amp hours. We need, see mathematics here, the whole day at six AH, right? Would be 10 hours would be 60. So if we need 50, we need eight hours at six, which, you know, if you've got plenty of sun like that all day, you know, some of that stuff, it's quite possible. So we could fully recharge these batteries in a whole day. So there's some simple mathematics for you. Hope it's helped, guys. You've seen a bit of what we're doing here and our vehicle setups as well, including the video. I hope you liked it. Stay tuned. We're going to have some action and entertainment in the Hilux out there with the winch. We're doing some other mods to the vehicle to increase its capability while keeping it reliable. I'm not telling you crap you don't need. It's just what we believe from our experience in the mechanical, in the business, on 4x4 diesel in the Proto Hospital and out on the tracks. We've been doing it for years. We're not here to sell you any particular brands or not. We try lots of different things. We've got ARB compressors in the Protos. We've got the King's compressor here in the Hilux. It certainly does pump up the tyres a bit faster than the standard ARB compressor, you know, the standard one. Um, I think the double pumper would probably be quicker than that. You can get these on special. All they're worth is about 120 bucks to be quite honest. That's all it's worth. But what we've done, we've bolted it down. It's a permanent fixture in here. It's got an Anderson plug on it. And I just use the same Anderson plug here, right? That's normally plugged into the compressor. I just unplug it to plug in the solar today. Um, nice secure battery. This is the projector battery bracket. It's a standard metal um, projector tray. It's all just bolted down. It's rock solid. Things need to be secure. Bada bing, that's enough information for this video. Uh, might have some posts on our Facebook groups about the voltages and what happened today with the charging, but I might get a bit, you know, need to disconnect one of them and drive the vehicle before the end of the day, so it might not fully work out. I'm monitoring the situation on the app. Thanks for watching. It might actually sit on 13 volts for a long time because a 160 watt panel trying to charge four batteries it's got its work cut out for it. It's going to take some time. But anyway, let's do it. Let's see what happens. It's certainly done well so far. It started off with all of them combined, 12.6. It's got to 13, and there's a fridge kicking in every now and then. Um, we're going to be looking at a sunny day. The fridge is in the car, probably uh, mid-20s, something like that. So average temperatures, not really hot climate. Let's see where it gets to. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, turn the bell on, and check out our Facebook post. I'll actually put the picture of the Facebook groups if you want to be in those to gather some more information. Bada bing, catch you on the next one guys, see ya.